Hi, I'm Brittany. Thanks for joining Float Schedule Masterclass. We'll dive into the mechanics, the nuts and bolts of your schedule and your project plan. So whether you're an experienced Float user or you're just onboarding your team to Float, after this overview, you'll have a better understanding of the features within the platform that can help you to maximize your team's resource planning potential. We'll focus the conversation around three topics. First, your schedule, how to view and read your team's capacity and availability. Next, we'll look at reading your project plan, how to plan and track your projects with ease using Float. And finally, we'll consider how to leverage your people and your project data to assign more sustainable workloads, creating a happier team. Let's get started with reading your Float schedule. Each Float view will vary depending on the team member's access rights. Today, we'll demonstrate using an admin level user, a high access user level. Now, you do have options for customizing your view. You can look at your schedule in weeks, days, or months. You can expand or contract your view. And additionally, you have the opportunity to export, save, or email your schedule. Across the platform, you'll have the option to leverage filters, which will narrow your view by using any of the fields or tags that you've leveraged when inputting your people and your projects. As an example, let's say I want to view one department within the schedule. You can hone in on the design department by selecting the department filter. You can also stack filters and save a filter when you have a filter that you're using often and want to be able to find more quickly. When you're ready to toggle off the filter, you'll just X out to return to a full team view within the schedule. You'll see a list of your team down the left-hand column, and to the right of each team member, you'll find their corresponding schedule. You can scan schedules in the future or past using the scroll bottom at the bottom, and then you can return to present day by selecting today. Let's talk about reading the schedule. You'll find all free space, time available to schedule work against, is represented within Float as white space. In that vein, you'll notice any red space indicates the work scheduled beyond a team member's standard capacity. In essence, this is overtime. All time off is marked on the schedule using diagonal lines to indicate this is a non-working period. Gray means consistent non-working hours, example here, Saturday and Sunday, and colored diagonal lines indicate different types of time off. Here we see paid time off, or you could scroll over here to see parental leave. Quick tip, you can adjust your team's standard working hours via your team settings, and then you'll want to set your team member specific adjustments within their individual profile. For example, let's navigate to Kayla. Now navigate over to Kayla's availability. Anyone with a full-time schedule is going to be set to the team's specified schedule from your settings. A part-time schedule simply means a schedule that falls outside of the lines of your team's typical workday. You can adjust days and work hours per day above or below full-time. And you'll notice here Kayla's always out on Wednesdays. Your team can choose to leverage statuses within Float. Statuses are a quick way to give your team an update on the schedule, and they're fully customizable within your team settings. They'll be identified by the small triangle in the bottom right corner of a team schedule. Finally, your scheduled project work will be indicated by three different types of work that you can quickly differentiate throughout your schedule. Confirmed work, completed work, and tentative work you'll find that confirmed work is in your schedule as a solid color. Completed work is indicated by a check mark in the upper right hand corner and tentatively scheduled work is indicated by an outline. Now that you know how to read your schedule, let's look at how to make schedule updates. From the schedule view, you have two options. Your first option, navigate to the plus mark in the upper hand corner and decide what time type you'd like to log. Let's go ahead and schedule a task. Now you've opened the task scheduling menu and you can proceed from here. Your second option, click directly into the white space within the schedule. Finally, let's consider how to split, link, and delete any tasks found within your schedule. Your first option here is to use the menu on the bottom right hand corner. Additionally, you can right click onto any project that you would like to, to pull the edit menu up for. Splitting a task will allow you to separate tasks for scheduling purposes. 
You can choose where you want to split a task. And when you're complete, go ahead and press Escape to remove the editing menu. Linking tasks allows you to create group dependencies between one or more tasks. Once the link is complete, press Escape to exit out of the menu. You'll see that these now indicate their two linked tasks, creating a group dependency. Now that we have a better understanding of your schedule, let's jump into reading our project plan. Select Project Plan from the upper left-hand menu and enable a Gantt chart-style view of your team's projects. This view reorganizes your schedule information to make project planning and editing a breeze. Your projects appear with their current budget status, while your team and their tasks appear directly below each project for visibility. Tasks will appear alongside the projects that they roll up to, and tasks that aren't part of the project will appear as grayed out blocks, allowing you to focus on the projects at hand while still giving you an overview of your team's competing priorities. You can hover over or click a cross-line task to see this information and make changes to it. Milestones appear across the project name on their assigned dates. They can be added and edited directly on the schedule just like any task can by clicking into the milestone. Phases appear to the right of each project and will run alongside the project throughout their duration. You can have overlapping or adjacent phases and phases create group dependencies. So milestones and tasks can actually roll up to a specific phase and you'll be able to adjust that phase by either clicking directly into the phase or dragging and dropping the phase. To get a high level overview of your projects without viewing your team's individual tasks, choose the collapse icon next to the project name. You can make changes to an individual project by clicking in the menu icon that appears when hovering over the project. You can edit, assign people, add phases, view project reports, shift timelines, duplicate, and archive projects. Likewise, if you choose to expand out and see your people once more, hover over each individual to open a menu allowing you to view their profile, switch person, or remove from project. We offer a second training session on setting up your projects, so we won't dive any further into this today. Let's move on to review how you can take all of this people and project data to better allocate work to your team. You have real-time quick data analytics available to you to sort through your project workloads. To do this, you'll want to aggregate your schedule or project plan data using what we call the loop. You can initiate the loop by dragging and dropping across any specified date range that you'd like to choose. You can adjust the loop by expanding or contracting it further. You'll see that analytics populate here, indicating the hours of work that are scheduled on a specific project. And you can jump back to your schedule to view the cumulative workload of your team. The loop stays intact, but now you are considering the full team's allocated work for the chosen time period. You can sort your people with this data to get a clear picture of your scheduled, unscheduled, and overtime for your team. I'll walk you through an example of how to do this. I know that I need a designer for a last minute project that needs attention next week. I'll initiate my loop here, and now I see data analytics on the left hand side. I'll add a filter for my design department, and now I'll sort this data for unscheduled high to low to identify that Natalia has 6.25 hours of availability next week. So I'll go ahead and allocate project work to Natalia knowing that she has the availability to complete it. And that wraps up our third point. You're now better prepared to continue planning your people's time within Float. We've reviewed reading your schedule, planning via your project plan, and using the loop to get a full picture of workloads and availability. We offer additional training topics that provide more granular insights into these topics. So keep an eye out on our live training calendar. Additionally, we have an unparalleled live support team available here within the Flow platform. Never hesitate to reach out to them with questions big or small. Navigate to the question mark in the lower left-hand corner and select chat support. A live support team member will get back to you shortly. Thank you for the time today.